In this video, we'll talk about Kotlin constructors and some of the common interview questions I see around them. So in the starter code that we have here in the main method, we are constructing a new person object and note that there is no new keyword in Kotlin. Here's how you construct this person object. And it takes in two parameters, a string name and integer age. We're printing out the description of that person. That person has a birthday and then the new description. With Linda, age 42, you can see that here is the description before when we run the program. And then after her birthday, her age is now 43, one year older. Let's now take a look at the implementation of the person class, which I have down here. So this is a fully functional implementation of the person class, but I've deliberately made it suboptimal and I would like us to fix it together. So let's spend about 15 seconds right now looking at this and trying to understand what would you improve about this. While you're doing that, if you're new here, I'm Rahul and I make videos about tech and programming, especially around Kotlin and Android. If you want to help me out, hit that like button and subscribe so you get notified when future videos come out. Let's start by understanding the code in the person class. There are two member variables or properties, mname and mage. And as soon as we call the constructor of the person class, we are setting the value of mname and mage equal to the constructor parameters, name and age. And you'll notice that m name is a val because it won't change after it's set. And age is a var. And that's because we do actually mutate it or change it over time. And that's exactly what we're doing in the had birthday method. We're incrementing m age. So the very first thing I'd like to fix up is the visibility of these two member variables. The default visibility modifier on any member variable is actually public. So what we have now is actually equivalent to this where we can add the public modifier on each of these properties. In the main function, when we create this new Linda person, we are now able to directly access or even modify any of these properties. And this is a cardinal sin of object-oriented programming. In OOP, you want to try and minimize the visibility and scope of variables as much as possible. So in the main function, we shouldn't have access to these properties in the person object. And so I'm gonna change both of these to be private. And now you can see how the editor is giving us an error when we try and access or set the property mh. All right, so that's one big improvement. The next change we'll make is a style improvement using idiomatic Kotlin. This pattern that we're doing here of taking a property and setting it exactly equal to a constructor parameter is so common that Kotlin has a shortcut for it. All we need to do is hoist the variable declaration into the constructor. So we can just take private val m name and have that be the first one and then private var m age and have that be the second parameter. Now we don't need this boilerplate code to set the property to the constructor parameter. Awesome. The third improvement is again, another style improvement. So many of you coming from the Java background will be used to variable names like this, where you have a prefix m, which stands for a member variable or property in the class. In Kotlin, however, if you look at the official style guide, you shouldn't have any prefix or suffixes. So really, a better way of writing this class would be just to say name, and then instead of mh, you would just say age. And so by refactoring it now, all the references to those variables also got updated appropriately. The last thing I'd like to show is the init block in Kotlin, which you'll see really frequently out in the real world. And the idea here is that what if you want to run some custom logic in the initialization of your class beyond just assigning properties to constructor parameters. Let's add one more constructor parameter into the person class called does smile, which is of type Boolean. And we're gonna use that in the init block. And let's say that Linda does smile a lot. And notice here that we are not declaring does smile with a val or a var, which means that this is not a property of the person class. In general, you want to reduce the scope of variables as much as possible. And so because we only need does smile in the init block, it's better not to make this a property so it won't be referenced in any other method. We're also going to have a property called nickname, which is of type string, and we're gonna compute the value of nickname based on the does smile constructor parameter. This is highlighted in red because we have to set a value for it at the time of initialization, and that's what we'll do in the init block. Here, we're going to set a local variable called smiley the value of which will be happy face or sad face depending on the value of does smile. And the cool thing here is that the if statement in Kotlin is an expression, so it returns a value unlike in Java. Now we'll use Kotlin string interpolation with a dollar sign to set the nickname equal to the name followed by the smiley. And finally, let's update the description to print out the nickname instead of the name. All right, let's try it. 
And because we passed in does smile equal to true, we can see Lindo with the smiley face, the nickname that we gave. And we can see, just like before, the age is incremented. So we know that in the course of our changes, we have confidence we haven't broken anything. Finally, that third parameter, does smile, is a good example of where I might use the named argument syntax of Kotlin. Just because Linda and 42, I think are pretty clear what they might represent in the person object, but a named argument can really help readability for a Boolean true or false value. All right, that's all I had for this video. I hope it gave you a good sense of constructors in Kotlin along with the init method. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment. I'd love to help. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.